God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us again for our Tuesday night teaching. And tonight we're going to deal with chapter 10, Eternal Judgment. Uh, for those that are able, and if you've not yet downloaded, please go to our website, www.ztministriestn.com, and look under the course outline, and you'll be able to download uh, what we're talking about tonight, chapter 10. We're dealing with eternal judgment. Um, Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you now for this lesson. We thank you for these thy people. God, we thank you for understanding. We thank you for another Tuesday night. Now look on your people this evening. In the name of Jesus, God, give us understanding. Give us revelation. And give us, God, what to say and how to say it. Open up our hearts and our minds to you. And we shall praise and magnify you. Give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Tonight's lesson deal with... Um, eternal judgment, eternal judgment. And the objectives of this lesson are upon completion of this chapter, we want you to be able to write uh, the key verse from memory, define the word judgment, explain why judgment is necessary, identify who will be judged at the final judgment, identify and explain the principles uh, governing the final judgment. And the key verse tonight is Isaiah 32 and 22. And it says this, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. Wow, what a powerful statement. The Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. Each on the judgment is the last part of the six foundational principles of the Christian faith. In the Old Testament, the word judgment is used in two ways. One refers to the statutes and testimonies and the laws of God. The other concerns God's judgment on men and nations. And the latter meaning is how the word judgment is used in the New Testament. It is meaning that it is used in this chapter. The word to judge means separate, to, to separate or make a difference between. This includes bringing to trial, executing evidence, determining guilt or innocence, and deciding the penalty for sin. Eternal judgment is the great and final judgment spoken of in the Bible, which determines the eternal destiny of all souls. Now, who's the judge? The judges. God is the judge. It tells us in Isaiah 32 and 22, but the Lord is our judge. Yes, the Lord is our judge. Sometimes we say, can't nobody judge me. Can't nobody do this. But friend, God is our judge. He is our judge. Then Hebrews 12 and 23 says, God, the judge of all. So then God judges the sinful behavior of mankind. Now, let's look at what is the sinful behavior of mankind. God's real desire is not judgment, but that all men come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, God does not want to judge us and condemn us to eternal damnation. We do that to ourselves. The truth is for us to come into the knowledge of his will, to come into the knowledge of his way, to come into what he would have us to do. For God sent not his son in John 3 and 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So then Jesus Christ he does not come to condemn us, but he comes to save us. Yes, he comes to save us from our sins. Second Peter 3 and 9 says this, For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we discussed repentance earlier. Repentance is a change of behavior, it's a change of action. It is a change. God's desire is that all men everywhere repent. If they do not repent of their sin, they will experience this judgment. In Acts 17 and 30 said, In the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Oh, it is a lonely feeling 
to stand before a judge. I mean, the courtroom can be full, but it is a lonely feeling. It seems as if you're in there by yourself. I've had to stand before the judge before uh, for some uh, speeding tickets. Yeah, 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 for a, few, for a few speeding tickets. And, you know, the judge asked me, he asked me a question. He said, Mr. Randall, he said, uh, were you speeding? I said, yes, sir, Your Honor, I, I, I was speeding. The judge said, what? I said, I was, I was, I was, that was me. I was speeding. The judge leaned back in his chair and said, an honest man, you going to be honest to tell me that you were speeding? I said, yes, sir, I was. He said, rarely do I hear the truth, but you told me the truth. And because of that, thank God, uh, he just missed something. Uh, it didn't go on my record, praise God. That was a blessing. Amen. So the truth helps. The truth helps. But when you stand before a judge, and I was terrified, and, you know, I was in so much uh, fear, you know, and I was nervous in appearing before an earthly judge. Now, if I had that terror and fear and nervousness appearing before an earthly judge, what do you think is going to happen when we have to appear before the eternal judge, the judge of judges, the king of kings, the Lord of lords? Now, Jesus Christ, God has given Jesus the authority to judge. Ah, look what the Bible says here. But he has given all judgment, the last judgment, and the whole business of judging entirely into the hands of the Son. And he has granted him authority. Uh -huh, and granted him the power to execute, exercise judgment because he is the son of man. He is the son of God. And that's in 1 John 5 and 22. The saints, the saints have been given the authority to judge. In the final judgment, true believers will help to judge the world. Do you not know that saints shall judge the world and the world should be judged by you? Are you unworthy to judge in the smallest matters? Uh, know ye not ye shall judge angels. And this is according to 1 Corinthians 6, verses 2 through 3. The word saints in this verse means all true believers. It's not restricted to the denomination. It means all true believers. Do you believe God? Do you trust God? Do you know what the word of God says about your faith, about how you believe? The standard of judgment. The standard by which we will all be judged is the word of God. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to the world, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. When we hear the word of God, we must not turn a deaf ear. Because the scripture says this, harden not your heart in the day that you hear my voice. When you hear the voice of God calling you, then that is not something for you to ignore. When you hear God calling you to holiness, when you hear God calling you to righteousness, and you hear the Lord calling you to come up higher, that is not anything for you to ignore, but it is for you to pay strict and close attention to. Amen. Because you want the Lord, amen, not to judge you, amen, but you want God to say, you want to be saved, amen. I don't want to have to appear before God to be judged, amen, for, you know, for evil things, for wicked things, for unrighteous things. But I want the Lord to be pleased with my life and everything that I have done. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words uh, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken the same should judge him in the last day. That's John 12, verses 47 through 48. It is not the standards, creeds, or tradition of men by which we will be judged. It is not on the basis of organizational or denominational rules. The standard by which we be judged, will be judged is the fixed standard of the word of God. I am you and I will be judged from this book. We're going to be judged from God's word, not according to the church of God in Christ doctrine, not according to the Methodist tenets of faith, not according to the Catholic tenets of faith, not according to the Baptist tenets of faith, not according to the word church tenets of faith, but we are going to be judged according to the word of God. What does God's word say about this matter? 
when we realize what the word of God says about the matter, then we can act and prepare accordingly. Now, we're not going to be judged, amen, of what your bishop said. Can I say that again? We're not going to be judged of what your bishop said. We're not going to be judged of what the council of elders said, but we will be judged on what the word of God says. Now, God holds me accountable and responsible for what is written in this book. And what's written in this book, I must obey it. I must follow after it. I must pursue it. I must chase it down. Amen. I must do whatever it takes in order for me to be saved. Because when I appear before the judgment seat of Christ, I want to be able to say, Lord, I've done what you have commanded me to do. I want to be able to overcome. I will will be an overcomer. I want to overcome in every area of my life. I want to overcome in the area of my trials. I want to overcome in the area of my tribulation. I want to um, overcome in the area of my temptation. I want to be able to overcome. Now, Jesus has given us the power to overcome. He's given us the ability to overcome. We must be willing to accept that power. We must be willing to accept that ability. Let's go, if you will. What power, what ability has he given us to overcome? Let's look at Matthew, the fourth chapter of Matthew. Amen. And uh, there in verse one, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So then it's not for me to live off my peas and beans. It's not for me to live off my chicken and steak, but I am to live according to the word of God. You must be delivered. I don't know who I'm talking to, but we must be delivered from people. We must be delivered from the opinion of people. It does not matter what the crowd thinks about you. It does not matter how the crowd feel about you. What does God say about you? It is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And then it says, the devil taking them up into the holy city and setting them on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answered and said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taking them up into an exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things will I give to thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, if Jesus overcame temptation, he gave us the ability and the power to overcome temptation as well. So then the areas in which we're going to be judged, Jesus overcame in those areas. What was area number one? Area number one, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He gave man the power and the ability over himself. Oh, my God. Woo. Hey, he gave man the power and the ability over himself. The word takes precedence over our flesh. The word takes precedence over what we want, our desire. Amen. You can desire one thing. You can desire this. You can, des can desire that. But if it's not according to God's word, whatever you desire, amen, praise God, it must be in the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. We know that we're in the will of God when we are in when we read and study the word of God. Then we know God's will because we know God's word. To know God's word is to know God's will. If you do not know God's word, you cannot know God's will because you need to know what the will says about your life. Oh my God, that's another message for another time. But can I tell you this right here? We are going to be judged from the word of God. So Jesus overcame in that area 
of his own desire. Yes, he was hungry. He had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Yes, he was hungry. Yes, the scripture did says he could command those stones to be made bread. Amen. Now, the problem was this. Amen. There was nothing wrong with Jesus commanding and turning the stones into bread. The problem came in, it was the devil that was telling him to do it. Now, who's telling us to do what we do? Sometimes we do the right thing. Sometimes we do the wrong thing. Who are we listening to? Are we listening to our daddy? Who's your daddy? Father's Day just passed. Who's your daddy? Amen. Who you listening to? Praise God. Are you listening to your father? Or are you listening to the devil? You've got to be willing to hear what the Lord is saying. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. So in this passage, Jesus has to overcome his own desire. Yes, he was hungry. Amen. But he realized if I turn these stones in the bread, I'm going to be doing what the devil said. And in no way, shape, form, or fashion can I be found doing what the devil says. Friend of mine, you cannot do what the devil tells you. If you end up doing what the devil tells you, praise God, and you have to appear before God in judgment, you will give an account of these things. Now, the Bible says in John 12 and 47 and 48, he that rejected me and receiveth my words uh, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. It is not the standards, creeds, or traditions, amen, of men by which we will be judged. It is not on the basis of an organizational or denominational rules or structure. The standard by which we will be judged is the fixed standard of the word of God. Whatever the word of God says, that's what I'm going to be judged by. The scripture says in Psalms 119 and 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The word of God has been settled. The word of God has been established. The word of God has been finished. Amen. You can't add to it and you can't take away from it, praise God. We are going to have to stand before judgment. Now, let's get back to Matthew because I, want, I need to finish explaining this and then get back to the rest of the lesson. It says in verse Matthew 4 and 5, Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Jesus at that point overcame the temptation of the flesh. And because he overcame the temptation of the flesh, praise God, we are able to overcome the temptation of our flesh. Oh my God, what is it about our flesh? What is it about this flesh that thing? When we understand, praise God, that in our flesh, the scripture says, in my flesh, that is in me dwelleth no good Thing. There's nothing good in my flesh. I don't care how saved I am. I don't care how saved you are. There's no good thing in your flesh. We must learn how to control our flesh. Yes, I know sometimes we may get weak. Sometimes we may fall along the way, but you must control your flesh. You've got to bring your flesh under subjection. You've got to bring your flesh in line with the word of God. You've got to bring your flesh in line with what God says. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The only thing you can fight the devil with is the word of God. The only thing that you have to stand up on is the word of God. That's what he's given us to fight with. Amen. The sword of the spirit, the word of God. That is what we have, God's word. Verse 8 says this. Again, the devil taking them up an exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Jesus said unto him, amen, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God 
and him only shalt thou serve. Now, the ultimate goal of, the, of Satan is to get us to worship him. He wants the glory that we are giving God. Oh, my God, we cannot afford to give him the glory. What gave the devil the authority? What gave the devil the power? What gave the devil, amen, the courage to say to Jesus, all these kingdoms will I give unto you because he is the God of this world. Yes, he is. He is Satan, the prince of the air, is the God of this world. He is lowercase g-o-d, but we serve capital case g-o-d. In all caps, we serve the God of gods. Hallelujah. We serve the king of kings. We serve the one, amen, who sits high and looks low. We serve the one, amen, praise God, that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above everything that we even ask or think. Now, what are the reasons for judgment? The Bible received, reveals that judgment is necessary because of sin against God's law, ungodliness, unrighteousness, unbelief, trespasses, and evil deeds. Although these are different words, all of those words are for sin. Sin against God's law. For as many as have sinned in the law should be judged by the law. That's in Romans 2 and 12, the law to which the writer was referring to, to which Paul was referring to, was the law that was written, amen, in the Old Testament, in the book of um, in the book of Numbers, Deuteronomy, Exodus, amen. Those are the books of the law, amen. When you look at the books of the law that's written, they had a law for this, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, amen. You kill my dog, I'm going to kill my cat. You shoot me in the leg, I'm going to shoot you in the arm. You know, vengeance, amen, belong to each other. But here in the New Testament, amen, we are no longer under the law because, amen, the scripture says this in the book of James 2 and 10, if we could keep the whole law, but yet offend in one point, we are guilty of them all. Therefore, man could not be justified by the law. Since God knew man could not be justified by the law, God sent his son, who we call Jesus. And the scripture says this, in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin while yet in the flesh. So he took us from under the law. Now, no longer are we under the law, but we are saved by grace. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, for by grace are you saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. Therefore, I have nothing to boast about. Oh, but if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in the grace of God. If I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in the goodness of God. If I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in the fact that God is God. And because he is God, hallelujah. I said, because he is God, I know upon whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able, hallelujah, to keep that which is committed unto me against that perfect day. So then when we sin against God's law and we have ungodliness and we have unrighteousness, we have unbelief and we trespass and we have evil deeds. Amen. These are the things that we will be brought into judgment for. Now, the Bible says this. That judgment shall begin at the house of God. And if judgment begins at the house of God, where shall it end? What are the principles of divine judgment? Worldly principles of judgment vary from nation to nations. Amen. The, na the standards... The standards may vary from state to state within a nation and from city to city. Worldly principles of judgment and punishment vary because people interpret certain acts in different ways. The same act interpreted as wrong in one culture may be acceptable in another culture. For example, killing a cow is viewed quite differently in America where it is used for meat than in India where a cow is considered sacred by some people. Amen. So then what's wrong to you may not be wrong to me. What's right to you may not be right to me. We all have different opinions. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion. All of us have opinions. All of us are entitled to have our opinions. However, the Bible is clear about one thing. The Bible says that all unrighteousness 
is sin. The Bible is clear about this. Amen. That if we are going to live godly, we will suffer persecution. The Bible is clear on this, that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible is clear on this, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we're going to be judged on the word of God. It's not how you see it. It's not how I see it. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. It's what the Bible says. It's what the word of God says. We're going to be judged on the basis of God's word. We're going to be judged according to knowledge. We're going to be judged individually. We're going to be judged according to the truth. The Bible says in Romans 2 and 2, but we are sure, oh my God, we are sure that the judgment of God is is true. And when you understand that the judgment of God is true, amen, and whatever happens, everything God has said is true. We're going to be judged on the basis of our personal conduct, how I conduct myself, I'm going to be judged. Yes, amen, we're going to be judged without partiality. Amen, God ain't got no respect to person. He going to, the president, the king, the governor, whoever, amen, going to have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen, there will be no big eyes, there will be no little U's. Amen, we all going to be shaking and trembling, praise God, for we are going to have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, there's a scripture that I want to share with you you. Amen. In the book of Revelation, praise God. Oh my God, my God, my God. Oh, you got to understand when we are judged, amen, when we are judged, amen, we are going to have to, and when we are judged, praise God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Amen. When we are judged, and you have to understand this, that when we are judged, amen, and we have to appear before Christ, and we have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. What are we going to tell a just God? What are we going to say to God? Amen. When it comes down. Amen. For us. Amen. To appear before him. Yes. I look in Revelation. I'm looking for it now. I'm looking for it now. I'm looking for it now. Praise God. I may have to come back to it. Amen. But the Bible says this in Revelation. In the kings of the earth, the great men, the mighty men stood. Amen. Praise God. They stood. And when they stood before God, amen, the Bible said they had to give an account for the deeds that were done in the body. Now, there's no way around it. I wish there was. I wish there was. Amen. But we are going to have to give an account of the deeds that have been done in our body. And when we give an account of the deeds that have been done in our body, what are we going to tell God? What are we going, amen, to stand before God? So I'm going to be judged according to the law. I'm going to be judged according to righteousness. I'm going to be judged according to my motives and my thoughts. I'm going to be judged during the time of judgment. Amen. Now, what, 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 what do you mean the time of judgment? The Bible indicates that there's a past present and a future judgment. What is the past judgment? The Bible is a history of God's past judgment. From the time of Adam and Eve, it records God's judgment of nations and individuals. The Bible records two special uh, past judgments that are important to believers. These are the judgments of Satan and the world. God has already passed judgment and set the penalties for both. In John 16 and 11, the prince of this world, Satan, is judged. And in Colossians 2 and 15, in having four principalities and powers, the forces of Satan, Jesus made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them. Satan has already been judged by God. He is already, he is allowed limited activity until he is cast into the lake of fire at the end of the world, but he is already condemned He's, oh, God, I, can't, I ain't got for five more minutes. He's already condemned as guilty. Satan's angel who left the original position in heaven of angels of God to join him in the rebellion, they are already condemned. This is a past judgment. Now, I know I've heard a teaching, amen, and it, it, it's totally ludicrous. Say, said, well, what if, what if, you know, at the end, the devil said, Lord, I'm sorry about this. God would forgive him. No, sir, no, sir, that's not going to happen. 
that is contrary to the word of God. Amen. The devil cannot repent. He is past repentant. Amen. He rebelled. He in a third of he in a third of heaven, they rebelled against God. And because they rebelled against God, God has already judged them. Amen. They've already been judged. He's been, been loose for a season. Amen. But can I tell you, praise God, that when they are finally judged, the Bible said that death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Jesus said, now the judgment of this world in John 12 and 21, but the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away, in which the heavens shall pass away, with a great noise and elements shall melt with the fervent heat, and the earth also in the works therein shall be burned and be burned up. That's in Second Peter 3 and 10. Yes, there is a judgment coming. Amen. We're going to deal with the present judgment and future judgment on next week. But I want to thank God for this lesson tonight. And I want to thank God for all of you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you now. I thank you for everybody. I thank you for everything. Lord, I pray now that you will look upon these thy people. God, I pray that you would give us, continue to give us understanding of your word. Continue to help us in every area of our lives. Bless us and keep us. In the name of Jesus, help us to be ready for your coming and to be prepared for that judgment. Lord, these are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Well, friends, join us. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same place. Until then, be blessed is my prayer for you. God bless you. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. If you would like to make contributions to the ministry, you can donate via Cash App, or by searching Zion Temple Church of God in Christ via Givelify. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.